Our program up to now has only handled 2D shapes. In this video, we're going to make it handle basic 3D shapes. The perspective we're going to use is one point perspective because achieving um, three point perspective or using a perspective matrix is a little bit too advanced for the engine we're going to create. So let's start first off by creating a new type of variable called A3D vertex. And that is just an array one, two, three of real values. And it's just like a vertex, except for it has an extra value added onto it, which is the Z. So it goes X, Y, and Z. So array value number three is the Z. Value. Then we create a new type called A3D polygon, which is just an array, one, two, three of A3D vertex. So it has three vertices of A3D vertex, which we just declared there. Then our functions need to be updated a bit. Well, we're going to create new functions. We're going to leave our 2D functions like they are. We're just going to create a new draw line function quickly. Um, procedure, draw. 3d line takes in vertex 1 vertex 2 and it is a 3d vertex now just quickly get the concept of drawing 3d into your head we're going to do a simple one point perspective on the screen here so my fading point is over there and we're going to draw some boxes so box number one stretches this far box number two will make over here so as you can see obviously things that are further into the distance become closer towards this point if i were to draw these shapes without perspective make a new layer so we're going to draw the back side of this block as well and as you add perspective that back side will move smaller and closer towards the vanishing point and as you remove perspective, it'll go back to where it was and become bigger again. So you can see that the further something is into the distance, the closer it comes towards the origin. How we're gonna do this is we're simply going to say that the position of each vertex on the X and Y plane is going to correspond to its Z value. So the more the Z value is, the more it's going to be pulled in towards the center. And to do that is really simple. All you're gonna do is divide the X by the Z value and the Y by the corresponding Z value. So points that are very close will have a very low Z value. That means they won't move towards the origin that much. Points that are very far will have a very high Z value, which means they'll be divided even more. So they'll move towards the origin. So if a point was over here and it was close, it'll stay there. If a point was very far and it was over here, it'll move towards the center. And you'll see how that works out in our program now. So, we have a procedure called draw 3d line it takes in vertex 1 vertex 2 which is a 3d vertex control shift c to drop that down and to draw this line it's actually very similar to the draw 2d line what you can do is go to your draw 2d line function which is over here copy everything from all the variables and um, till the last end just copy that and paste that into your draw 3d line procedure then what you need to do is here where you've declared in the previous video uh, xa is equal to vertex 1's x value xb is vertex 2's x value and so on you're just going to edit these lines so you're going to say xa is equal to vertex 1's x value divided by vertex 1's z value and that's it so you keep on dividing the corresponding vertices with their own z values so this is vertex 1 this is vertex 2 vertex 1 vertex 2 so that already will give you um, a basic perspective if you have a Z value for a vertex. But we have a problem here. What if the Z value is zero? It'll divide by zero, which can't happen. And what we're going to do is we're going to clip off any vertices that are less than a certain value. And that value we're going to call our clipping plane. Now it's much more complicated than a real 3D engine, but it's going to be a simple value for us and not an actual plane. And the way a clipping plane works is the following. The way our clipping plane is going to work, it's not going to be a plane, it's going to be a simple linear value. Say our camera looks at our scene over here, we're going to have a minimum distance between the camera and the closest point you can draw. We're going to make that distance 0.01 for now, even though you can change it as much as you want. That just means that it'll stop drawing lines at a certain point. So say we make it over here and we have a line that's in our area somewhere over here that's will that will be drawn all these lines will be drawn but as soon as you have a line that one of its z values goes over it will not be drawn so anything that's closer than 
our cutoff point will not be drawn any line so even if you have a line that's over there and it stretches into the distance that will not be drawn the way a proper graphics engine does this is it actually just chops that line into two bits so it makes this a line and it makes this a line then it doesn't draw this part of the line but it still draws this part of the line so if you have if you have a polygon that goes over the line it's going to just chop off that part of the polygon and still draw the rest and then change it into polygon that may look like this and you can see that this process would require a lot more maths than we're going to do in this small engine that we're making because they have to now create even more polygons to make this complex shape or um, refill it or something like that so we're not going to do that in our engine if these two lines of the polygon are beyond our Z cutoff we're not going to draw any of them and it won't look strange until you're very very close to an object and it doesn't draw most of the lines that it's consists of but we don't have to worry about that because most of the objects that we're going to work with are going to be in this area over here so what those engines do with the clipping plane is they have a maximum render distance but it's a plane so it'll look something like this you have your object in the scene there and then you have your clipping plane which for example will sit like this if you're looking downwards a bit and it'll intersect with anything that is past it it'll chop that all off and it will only draw parts of the polygon that you can see that is past this plane over here and you'll see in a lot of games like Counter Strike or anything for that matter if you look at a very close object and it's being clipped like here with a clipping plane the clipping plane is always perpendicular to the camera and so so as you look up or down you'll see that what is being clipped will change so you can go and try this uh, on any game and see how the clipped part of the object changes as you change your view but our clipping is going to work in a much easier way the, this clipping works with a plane and the clipping works in 3d so anything that is within a certain radius of the camera gets clipped and that's why it forms a plane when it clips but our clipping value is going to be much easier it's going to clip anything that's closer than a certain Z value so it doesn't matter the orientation of the camera um, even if the camera is pointing straight up if anything's closer than this point it will get clipped so we're not going to worry about um, following the camera's view for the clipping and it looks like this you'll see that there's a block over here there's no shading here but you can see that the clipping that occurred um, is over here that part of the block was sort of just sliced out by a plane and that is the near clipping plane stopping objects from being rendered too close to the screen or the camera so what we're going to do to stop it from trying to divide by zero is we're going to make an if statement we're going to say if vertex 1's z value is larger than 0 0.01 we're going to move it away from zero uh, by about 0 0.01 so the camera won't be exactly on the screen it'll look more neat if it's a little bit away so we're going to make it 0 0.01 um, if vertex 1's z value is larger than 0 0.01 and vertex 2's z value is larger than 0 0.01 then begin with all the rest of the drawing of the lines and stuff like that so begin there and we place an end over here and that'll prevent us from dividing by zero now another thing we have to check for when we divide by zero is our m value over here we can see that if the xa and the xb are the same values we can easily get a zero over here which is not allowed so we're going to do an if statement saying if xa is equal to xb then xa is equal to xa plus 0 0.01 so when xa and xb are the same we're going to modify xa a little bit just so it's not zero when we subtract them over here this will not modify the actual polygon because as you remember we are using xa as a temporary variable referencing it from vertex 1 and vertex 2 and so on so that'll stop this from throwing a divide by zero error and that should be it for our draw 3d line function now we're quickly going to write a draw 3d polygon function so under our draw polygon we're going to say procedure draw 3d polygon and it'll take poly in which is a 3d polygon and just like with the draw polygon function we're just going to call the draw 3d line functions for to draw this polygon so draw 3d line poly ins first vertex to 
booleans second vertex. So it'll go from vertex 1 to vertex 2 and just like the normal draw line function it'll go from vertex 2 to vertex 3 over here and for the last one vertex 1 back to vertex 3. And that's it for our draw 3 polygon function. So what we need to do now is we need to update our test poly so it becomes a 3D polygon not just a 2D polygon. So test poly is equal to a 3D polygon and that's it. Then our declaration of it on starter we need to change so it has z values as well. So we're going to leave the x and the y and we're just going to give each vertex a z value as well. Just copy these. So test poly vertex 1's z value changes to 3, 3 and 3. So we're referencing the z value the whole time and we're going to make these random values. So let's make it 30, we'll make this one 10 and we'll make this one 0. And now we have a 3D triangle here. So now let's quickly go to our translate polygon function. We're going to make a new one called function translate 3D polygon. So it'll take poly in, which is a 3D polygon. It'll take in the x, y, and z this time of real values of which we want it to be translated by, and that'll output a 3D polygon. Drop that down, and let's begin. So create a temporary polygon, temp poly which is a 3D polygon and let's create a loop variable here quickly so we're going to say i which is an integer then we say for i is equal to 1, 2, 3 for all the vertices do begin ten polys i's vertex the x value is equal to poly n's i's vertex's x value plus x so we just copy this for x, y, and z. So temp poly's i vertex is equal to poly n's i vertex, the y value plus y. Do the same for the z and end the loop and result is temp poly. So what we're doing is we're going to loop through the x, y, and z of each vertex of the polygon and it's going to add the values that we give it over here, the x, y, and z. And just like the 2D one, it has now translated our 3D polygon.